Last year, in the summer of 2022, I signed a one-year lease on some office space in a building near my home, which was supposed to solve two problems, give me more space to work with, which was the main one, and also hopefully reduce the outside noise I have to work around occasionally while filming at home such as trains or neighborhood lawnmowers. So we moved into the office, gave it a fresh coat of paint, and spent a comfortable year or so producing videos there, until sometime in late spring 2023 when I decided I did not want to keep it. And so now I'm bringing you this video series documenting my move back home from the office with some remodeling happening first, but before any of that, let's answer the core question I've been getting since I made this move public. Why? Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by Micro Center. This is one of my favorite places to buy PC parts. So if you're building or upgrading your PC, I highly recommend making your way down to one of their 25 retail stores in the US. They have consistently competitive prices and an excellent selection of PC hardware and other tech goodies. And they have a custom PC builder on the Micro Center website. Use it to spec out your rig and it will show you parts in store at your nearest location while ensuring compatibility. Then you can pick up in store or have their pros assemble it for you. So click the sponsor link in the description to find a Micro Center near you. So kicking things off with some before shots at the beginning of the first week, day one, or technically day zero, back in late June, this was actually a prep day before I brought any extra help in to speed up the job. But hopefully it's pretty evident that both my garage and my covered side yard that I had so many plans for back in late 2019 are completely piled with stuff, a disorganized mess, and that's one part of the why you do this answer. With my already limited time being split between upkeep on my home and work to improve my office space, the work areas at home became neglected, dusty, cobwebby messes. A bagster bag was a key part of this clear out phase, which Nori helped me set up. It's a big green bag that you buy for 30 or 40 bucks that can fit up to 3,300 pounds of refuse, and then you schedule a pickup that costs 200 to 400 bucks, depending on where you live and they just come by and pick up the whole bag. So a big goal was to dig these cluttered areas out, particularly my side yard, which was largely relegated to storage after COVID hit in early 2020. I also very much needed to make use of this space again for this project. For storage again, of course, as the work I lined up involved upgrades, not just to my garage, but also our computer room and master bedroom, which were scheduled for renovation as well. Fortunately, I got a lot done on day zero, knocked down many spider webs, busted out the sawzall to break down some plywood that was obviously haunted, cleared out some old cabinet doors that I had intended to reuse, but COVID happened, although I did still save the drawer slides. They were just infested with earwigs, which was kind of gross. Oh, and I bravely killed multiple black and brown widows, so Joe would have a safer work environment on day one. We're beginning day two, day two? Day, we started with day zero, so now it's day one. We're gonna take this space out here, which has been not completely emptied, but is mostly empty. And we're gonna fill it up with all that stuff. Let's go. I was amazed and a little embarrassed at how much stuff was still in my garage, even though I had relocated a lot of it to my office, but having Joe there to help made things proceed much more quickly. I already knew that I would need a ton of space since the garage needed to be completely emptied, but let's finish off that why you do this question. First, I did this to concentrate my time on one space at home instead of splitting it between the home and office. Second, to eliminate the expense of a monthly office lease. That's a benefit. Third, of course, was the issue of space, and I know more space is good for video making and PC hardware testing, but I like efficient space, and I've known for some time that my garage and side yard space are not set up very efficiently. So I will hopefully be proving that I actually have plenty of space to work with here at home if I clear away the old and unused stuff and keep things clean and organized. Fourth and lastly, noise was always a minor problem at home, but it turns out that noise was an issue at the office too, whether that was due to cars with stupid loud exhaust or sound systems going by through the busy intersection nearby, neighboring office noise due to walls that were very thin and lacked sound dampening, or sirens from the fire station up the street. So with all that give and take, working from home again seemed like the best choice. End of day one. The ground is looking much more clear. We got the main table out of here. Uh, a little bit of work equipment and stuff over there, but this wall is clear. This is where a lot of the electrical work is gonna happen because the mini split AC it's gonna be going up there. I might need to clear a little bit of space over here so he can access 
some of the uh, outlets on the roof. The giveaway slash sell for donations pile is getting larger and the side yard is steadily filling up. Of course the table hasn't had anything piled on top of it yet and I need to do a bunch of organization and moving stuff around out here because right now uh, despite my best efforts to keep things somewhat organized like those bins over there a lot of stuff is just piled. Tomorrow morning the electrician is going to be starting bright and early and the mini splits other side is going to go in this wall right here so also going to need to clear that space down there. But that's all for day one, uh, I guess, and day zero. Let's see what happens tomorrow. On day two, the first contractors arrived. This was the electrical work phase, and I did work with a general contractor. His name is Michael, and his company is called Artisan Build Group. He also handled a lot of the work that I had done back at the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020. So while Joe and I continued to clear the garage, making good use of my new shop vac among other things, electricians Daniel and Fernando started punching holes in the wall to run cabling over for a 60 amp sub panel as well as relocation of several outlets. The contract work was split into five phases and this video only covers the first phase, the electric work which is the sub panel, the outlets, setting things up so I can have a dedicated split HVAC unit, and also running wired ethernet out from my living room through the wall. Phase two will be drywall, which involves patching all these holes and a big job to skim coat our computer room and master bedroom, which if you watched my remodel videos back in 2019 and 2020, you might recall have horrible gobbed on texture, which we would like to not be there anymore. Phase three will be painting, Phase four is the HVAC installation, and phase five is going to be a self-leveling garage floor finish with sanding and seal included. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's still lots of work to be done before all that. Electrical work continued on day three whilst Joe and I finished off clearing out the garage, which is mostly just the ceiling racks, which were still installed, but still had stuff piled in them. I also dug up my 500 foot box of Cat6 cable so they could run the wired ethernet through the walls rather than doing it not through the walls as I have done in the past. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this Cat6 cable is going to support, for example, a 10 gigabit signal. It depends on the length. Technically, it's only rated for gigabit. Yes, I should have gone with Cat6e, but the Cat6 was all I had and this was sort of a last minute add-on when they were running the wiring. I was like, oh, maybe you could do that too. So in one of the following videos in this series, I will actually be testing that Cat6 cable to see what kind of speeds it's capable of and to make sure it actually works. Other than that, I did some electrical work myself because when the patio cover was installed out here, they actually never installed the LEDs properly. So I actually handled that job on my own. This basically makes me a full on professional electrician now. To be fair, these are actually fairly simple to install, but I am happy to say that I did it right. And the next day when I came back to test them out, I was able to flip the switch and now I have lights outside, which of course is something that should have happened several years ago. But since it's finally happening now, feels like a big accomplishment. But I would like to say a huge thank you to the electricians who came out and did the work on my home and my garage, Daniel and Fernando. They were super friendly, super knowledgeable, and they did an excellent job. So here it is, you guys, the after shots. One week into this project, and I don't know if you can tell, but it's a bit more echoey in here than it was at the beginning of this week. So obviously the space is not cleared completely. We have a little bit more work to do to start the beginning of week two. Week two is going to kick off with drywall work. So anywhere where they had to cut holes in the walls to feed over to put like a, a light fixture there so we can have a proper light here over the washing machine area. They're gonna be fixing that up. They, they might do some stuff back here even. Maybe even up there. That would be nice for them to, that, that's always looked a little awkward to me. But I'm happy to say that the week one work has gone uh, pretty smoothly for the most part. Not too many complaints. And now we just have to work on like, this is the giveaway pile over there. Workbench corner needs a little bit of clean out as well, but uh, oh hey, check this out. Look at this, light switches. Switch here is gonna be for the receptacle right there, which isn't connected, so that's not working right now. But this upper one here connects to half of that overhead plug. Uh, they actually had to cut a hole in the ceiling to go up. Did you know that there's like an attic above my garage? I didn't know that. Look at this now, I can switch this switch to turn the lights on and off. Or at least whatever lights are plugged in to half of that receptacle up there. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that, even though it's a simple upgrade. Even nicer, the plugs that were formerly up here, which were not in the best place aesthetically, are now down here. We've also updated them to quads, so we have more plugs available, and we even have an actual RJ45 keystone there for the pass-through over to the main network, so that's cool too. Another set of plugs added in over here by the workbench. And then these two switches here for the exterior. One for this light right here. Ta-da! 
and one for the overhead LEDs. Uh, and tr I've tried these at night now and they are really, really nice, very bright, and it really lights up the space. But thank you guys very much for watching this video as I take you along my home upgrade journey. Next phase is going to be the drywall work inside. That's also going to be drywall work in two of the rooms in our house, which means we have even more moving out and clearing out of stuff to do. And then some of you might have been noticing that I have a lot of stuff sort of stashed out here in the side yard. We're going to be sorting through that to get some of the higher value stuff uh, a little bit more secured. And yes, these videos are being posted with a delay, so uh, all this stuff by the time this video goes live is going to be cleared out of here. But that's all the time I have for this one, you guys. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button for sure. I have more home upgrade videos coming. I have at least a couple more weeks of work going on with this project. And of course, I have my regular tech news segments going up on Sundays, as well as a few other videos here and there as we make our way through the summer. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video. Oh, no you don't, crickets. No you don't, crickets. You have a temporary lease here, and you are not allowed to be making lots of noise. You stop it. Ow.